I first started playing mandolin when I was 24. Um, I started playing guitar when I was 12, and you know I, I wound up like studying jazz guitar, and I was a pretty decent jazz guitar player. I was a classical guitar major in college until I abruptly changed my major. Um, <laughs> and, and you know I, I'd done a lot of guitar playing, and I don't know I was just I was at a point when I was 24, like I wasn't really trying to make anything happen musically except fun, and I was just tired of being like yet another guy with a guitar. You know, and when I saw a mandolin for sale, I was like, okay, I, I could do that. If I learn four chords, I'm in, you know. <laughs> so, well, I also played a lot of bass in bands, like, starting when I was about 16. It was uh, kind of the old thing, like, hey, Barry, can you make a gig Friday night? Our bass player can't. Can you learn these songs? I'm like, sure. And I loved playing bass. I loved playing bass. And what I found with mandolin is I could actually, like, make up bass lines because I was even higher in pitch than the guitars. I'm not interfering with anybody's rhythm. It's just like a cool little counter melody or something, but in my mind, it's a bass line. If I were playing a bass, I'd be playing a bass line, you know? But I could play chords on the mandolin too, and I can play percussion with the mandolin. It was like, oh man, you know, I left all that other stuff behind. This is the only one. <laughs> you know, like I like, to, I like to listen to a lot of, I like to listen to a lot of classic rock. I like to listen to jazz. I like to listen to classical music. I like to listen to bluegrass. I like to listen to lots of stuff, but I tend to be sort of narrow and deep when I do it. Like right now, I'm, in a, I'm back on a Grateful Dead phase, so it's like pretty much all I'm really listening to. But four months ago, I wasn't listening to any Grateful Dead, and I was pretty much only listening to jazz. And it, you know, and I kind of have to do that. It's really hard for me to like sit there and like be leaping around all over. So you know, every six months, it's, I sort of like reset it onto something else. You've bought me a car. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's terrible to talk like that. It's kind of true. <laughs> like I, I don't really care that this there isn't like a di an awesome wood grain pattern on the front, you know, and like, and there's nothing unattractive about this, but it's not a standout back, you know, and I, I don't care. Like I don't really think about it like that. This thing sounds awesome, and that's what I want, you know. And I'd really like a two point. What I'd really like is a three point because I think I think I dig this into me when I bend over. So I think if I didn't have it, I'd miss it. But I've come like. I'd like to have a not a not an F style, just because everybody has an F style, you know. I guess I always kind of you know like use a metronome <laughs> and learn the names of the notes. Don't just learn the fingering patterns because when you think of them as like notes, it opens up a lot more possibilities than just this finger goes here and then this finger goes here. Um, I don't know when you start playing with people, listen to what they do more than you listen to what you're doing. You know, and try to accompany other people. And I don't know when you're first starting out touring, treat everyone nice and tip your servers and tip your bartenders. You know, like you know, put that put that energy out there because it does come back to you. When we first started and we didn't have money for gas, we'd still tip. <laughs> I think it's important. You know, if you got five people come to the show, the staff that's working are going to tell the guy who booked you whether you're worth coming back or not. You know, so you, you treat them right, and then they'll say, yeah, those guys are great, they're nice. You know, like, they're nice, they're good to work with, they work hard, we should invite them back.